Okay. I had a guy, I'm having to use a cheat sheet here. I'm, I'm that stupid, but anyways, a guy left a comment here today, Keegan Cook, and he's wanting, he's getting into rabbit hunting. He's wanting me to answer a few questions, so I figured I would. I ain't gonna cover everything about rabbit hunting in this video, but I'm, I'm at least gonna answer his questions, just keep it from being like three or four hours long. There's a lot to it, it's more than meets the eye, but just to basically answer some of his questions, here we go, this video's for Keegan Cook. Anybody else wants to enjoy it? Uh, first question, uh, is it better to run dogs early or late? Well, that depends on your weather conditions that day. Well, the best time to run them is if it ain't too hot and if you got moisture on the ground. It don't matter if it's dry that morning, you know, and then later on that evening it sprinkles a little bit or something, you're better off going later, you know. Uh, and oftentimes when I, I make a distinguishment or I distinguish running from hunting. To me, running is just cutting your dogs loose and listening to them run. You're, you're exercising your dogs. Um, hunting, you turn them loose and you're actually trying to get ahead of the rabbit and kill the rabbit. So to me, there's they're two totally different things between running and hunting but everybody's got their own opinions. Uh, really, the best time... Hey. Hush up. Really, the best time to run dogs is at night, to be dead honest with you, because it ain't never going to be too hot, and there's always going to be dew on the ground at night time. So, really, night time's the best time to run, but hunting, it just depends on what your moisture's doing that day. You're trying to hunt the moisture. That's, that's real crucial. And not get burn your dogs up. So hopefully that answered your question. If not, let me know. Uh, best gun to hunt with? Well, for rabbit hunting, I'd, I definitely would put it towards the shotgun, in my personal opinion. And some people take a rifle, but a rifle, if it ricochet, you know, it ain't the fact that of, of killing the rabbit, it's the fact of the danger level. The, you know, shot hits the ground, you know, four shot or less hits the ground, and ricochets don't do... I mean, be honest with you, out there rabbit hunting, we've dusted each other several times. You know, if you if you know what you're doing, you know the you know what your gun will do. That's fine, you know. But if a bullet, a 22 even ricochets off the ground, I mean, that, that can do a little bit of damage. That can hurt, and that can definitely put an eye out. Um, you know, so if you know what you're doing, that's fine. But on a safety level, I especially new people, I don't recommend a rifle until you get comfortable and get your um, anxiety level down for when a rabbit's coming up on you know you're not just shooting at everything you're you're kind of calm down I don't recommend a rifle in the beginning um, and really on the gun I guess it depends on what kind of hunt you're gonna be going on are you gonna be on a hunt where you're gonna be hunting just one little thicket and just running the dogs right around in there you're gonna be one of them hunts where you're walking a blue million miles really honestly and ideally in my opinion, if your goal is to go out and kill rabbits, just get you a, just get you some version of a 12 gauge because it's going to sling more lead over a 20 gauge or anything else. If if it's just killing on your mind, um, definitely, definitely go with a 12 gauge. It's just slinging more lead increases your odds. Um, as far as what style of 12 gauge. If you're not walking a whole bunch, get something with a lot of extra shots, even though they're not really necessary, but, you know, the heavier guns, you don't want to be walking all day with them. Really, to be honest with you, a single shot is really hard to beat because it's so lightweight and you can just throw up so fast, you know, as opposed to big guns, you know. And really, if killing's what's on your mind, I don't recommend a slang neither because when you throw up and that slang's on the bottom, that slang is still shaking, that'll throw you off sometimes too. So, a single shot is really probably just all the way around, probably about the best gun for rabbit hunting. Because most of the time a rabbit jumps out, most of the time it's just a quick thing. You know, if you seen my video earlier, that rabbit come out and was gone. And I missed him because I was trying to get the camera on him. But generally, you're only getting one shot at a rabbit anyways, nine times out of ten. So really, and just in my personal opinion, the best all around is a single shot. It's lightweight, it throws up super fast, and you're probably only getting one shot anyways. So, in my opinion, single shots are really, really hard to beat. Uh, I know it's a bit windy. Hopefully that answered your question. Three, which is more fun to run, swamp rabbits or cottontails? 
that's that's also just a matter of opinion um, if you like more of a challenge definitely a swamp rabbit uh, in my opinion it also depends what kind of dogs you got me personally my dogs don't run a cottontail as good as they do a swamp rabbit I trained them more on swamp rabbits are used to them being they're used to having plenty of scent and running a good straight line sometimes they're used to, they're used to that uh, in the swamps you know it's more wetter so you're going to have more scent left behind uh, cottontails sometimes will be in some really dry sage patch and stuff like that and they can run them they're just not as good at it so but even then in my personal opinion i'd still say cottontails because you'll have a higher volume of cottontails you'll get more shots they don't go running off in bum egypt you know two three hundred yards a thousand yards whatever you know swamp rabbit he can get gone i mean he can he can cover a lot of distance so if you like the challenge i'd say a swamp rabbit if you like pulling a trigger i'd say cottontail it really just depends it's really up to the person <clears throat> let's see here hopefully that answered that question do rabbits run in a circle sometimes yes sometimes no once again it's up to the rabbit some I'd say with my experience, it's about 50-50. Some of them will just, you know, run a little, kind of like a circle. It won't be a perfect circle, but it might zig and zag over here. But eventually, they'll kind of sometimes come within 100 yards where you jumped them. And most people call that a circle. But as far as how they run, if he does circle, he's going to circle in the area that he's comfortable with. Now, hey, now, what I mean by that is, let's say he's got his home range. And when you jumped him, he may have went out of his home range and he may have been off here in bum Egypt, you know, hunting food, chasing a mate, whatever. The dogs jump him. He may run a straight line, you know, 500 yards until he gets back to his home spot, his home range, then he might start circling. So I guess he run a lollipop, you know, he just went, and then, you know, I don't know what you'd call that. And then there's other times I've had them, they run a straight line to a spot and they'd go this way, come straight back to that spot, go that way, come back to this. So they wouldn't really run in a circle. There's more or less, running across or running just just going all kind of directions but going right back to the same spot like that i don't know what you call that and i've had them tear out the longest race i've ever had as far as from where we jumped them to where the rabbit was it was over 1200 yards the dogs got on a swamp rabbit and run him a small circle somebody shot him with a 20 gauge in the face and it didn't kill him and that rabbit turned around and i thought we found fur everywhere but he rolled that rabbit it got up and that rabbit since he was shot i guess he run a straight line 1200 and something yards and i man i'd have thought if if i wouldn't have seen it i'd have got him off of it i'd have beeped him off of it thinking it was a deer but man that was a fast hot race they run him all the way out there and i started going behind them you know trying to keep up with them and um uh, and i he, he went out 1200 yards and he run straight back Got, I missed him because I didn't time him between the trees right and then all the other guys behind me they didn't spread out enough and he got past them and then he ran out in the middle of a big flooded timber and they, the dogs couldn't find him after that but yeah all together they run that rabbit over a mile and a half all together no joke so and then the furthest I've had a cottontail go was 800 yards and he was also shot I was using some uh, number four black clouds which still shot sucks don't use it on rabbits do not use it on rabbits it's lighter weight and it sucks but anyhow rabbit run out and i shot him right in the back end and uh, that rabbit run out 800 and something yards he came straight back and the, and the dogs caught him or sooner caught him right before you know he got to my buddy over there we just heard him run him down and catch him and we didn't even know he was hit because there wasn't no damage on him well i took him on back and i got to cleaning him and no joke the reason i knew i shot him because a black cloud has got one little shot in it it's got, uh, they call it a flight stopper shot. It's got that little ring all the way around the shell. He was hit with one pellet right up above the hip right here. Didn't bust no bone or nothing because, you know, still shot sucks. But it was right up under the skin and, and I dug it out of that rabbit's back end. So I knew that was one that, uh, that I had put in him. Because who the heck else is going to be out there using duck load to go after rabbits, you know? But either way, both of them were shot, so both of them wasn't a, a normal healthy rabbit race. But either way, it still shows you the distance they can cover. But uh, so do they run a circle? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. They got a mind of their own. I've had them, I've had them run all kind of ways, but you never, every rabbit's going to have his own mind. You never really know. Just try to cut off all the options that you can. 
that's the best thing I can tell you. It's a uh, when you're dog hunting, you're trying to take that rabbit's past because them dogs don't tell you where he's at. Them dogs tell you where he has been, so they're telling you that rabbit's past. So what you do is you take that rabbit's past and you use it to predict his future. And every rabbit's gonna be different. You don't have a clue what they're gonna do. There ain't there ain't no telling. So it's it's kind of like a big old chess game, you know. There he's making moves and you're trying to cut him off, you know. So once again, I know it's a bit windy. I hope that answers your question. <clears throat> Is it good to train pups with an older dog? Uh, it can be. Once again, every dog's got his own mind, and some of them that works wonders for, and some of them that, that'll learn them. You know, you, when you go to train dogs, there ain't no set in stone concrete method. If you just take every dog has got his own personality, and if you just give every single dog the exact same training. You will not, guaranteed, you will not have the exact same results. Every dog is going to need to have something different in its training to get a similar result. And you're still not going to get, you know, completely identical results, but every dog is going to need a little help in different areas to get him to about where you want him at. Some dogs, you know, you can't scold them. Some dogs, you know, you know, you can't shock them. They, they, their butt hurt after that, you know. Every dog's different. Some of them take it great. Some of them, that's what they need. Every dog is completely different. They need some different type of training. Some of them, you know, you put them with another dog, they're not worth a dang. Some of them, if you try to train them by themselves with a rabbit, they're not worth a dang. So that's, that's a really hard one to, to answer, you know, at least from my standpoint, knowing what I know. But generally speaking, on a general mindset, is it good to train them with older dogs? Yeah, if, if it's a good dog, train them with the best dog you can possibly train them with. And uh, they, if that's the only dog you train them with, they're obviously going to pick up the most they can with it. But uh, and this, this, this is going to get a bit windy right here. This is a very, very in-depth subject. Um, when it comes to the pup training, when it comes to training in general, everybody's got their own opinion on it. And I'll just explain, I, I mean, I understand other people's points of view, but I'll just explain mine and why I do it. When they're pups, that's when you start. I mean, when they're pups, when they're six weeks old, even before that, get them used to you. Get them used to smelling your feet, play with them, you know. Get them used to a high, just make it a challenge. The whole point about training, in my mindset, is get them used to one step until they do it without failure, and then move to the next step, just a baby step like a hide then you know maybe running chasing a hide then maybe having to you know go to, you know find a hide 10 foot from you then when they don't fail on that move it to hiding it you know put it behind a corner somewhere get them to scent that down when they get used to that move them to a live rabbit get them used to that where they don't fail when they get you know just keep adding on and adding on and adding on and spend about if, if they need it to spend about a week or so on each step um for the best results because you're really trying to drill it in their head if you do it that way but as far as running with older dogs, once you've taught them all that you can, there's only so much you can teach them. Because no matter how what you do in the yard, you're not going to completely replicate what a wild rabbit will do. So get them started with another, after that point, or after they, you got them comfortable, they never fail on a rabbit, a tame rabbit. Never fail to find him, never fail to chase him, send him down, hunt him, whatever. Move them with bigger dogs. They'll learn a lot from the older dogs. Now, some people say when you move them to an older dog, you try to you may use a slow dog they say make him make sure it's real slow and real precise and you know real let that pup really be able to pay close attention and take his time to know what to do uh, they say those are the best teachers because they teach them slow i've got a different opinion on that uh, because once again I'm, I'm i mostly train swamp rabbit dogs i train fast ones what i do is when they're young I'm talking about normally by the time they're 10 or 12 weeks old, I've already got them used to a hide. I've already got them used to a tame rabbit. I've got them coming up to me, you know, they're not failing me, usually speaking, if, if I get to train them the way I want to. So they're not failing me. So when that happens, like I said, like I said, three months old, I got them pretty much ready to go. They're functioning with me. To be honest with you, I put them with the fastest dogs I got and we just go hit the woods just be dead honest with you and the reason i do that is because i'm i'm really trying to put it on these pups i'm really trying to test them now i'm not 
when I say put it on them, I'm not abusive, I'm not hurting them, I'm just putting them in scenarios that's tougher. Because I, I want them to get the best performance that I can out of them. And when you put them with a faster dog, he's, he's a little short-legged, he's not really going to be learning how to run, I'll be dead honest with you. He's doing everything he can to keep up with them dogs. You've already taught him how to scent trail and stuff on tame rabbits, now you need to teach him how to be fast, you see what I'm saying? So in my personal opinion, for my area, what works around here, I put him with the fastest dogs I can, and when he's young, he's just hauling butt trying to keep up with him, and it teaches him to be fast, it builds up his endurance, it builds up his speed, and if you do it to him when he's young, you know, 10, 12 weeks old, you know, by the time he gets on up about four months to six months, he's running. If you've been taking him out two or three times a week and putting him, you know, with other dogs, and in between them sessions, if you'll go out there, like if you run him two or three times a week, and then you just turn loose a rabbit in the yard, let him run it around, just build his confidence up. If you do that, I, I almost guarantee you by the time he's four to six months old, you will have a rabbit dog. And, uh, yeah, he'll learn how to, he'll know how to go with a pack, you know, he'll, he'll learn how to go with these, I bark with these, you know, I do this with these other dogs. He'll get the gist of it. You'll have a rabbit dog. And the final step, which I ain't been able to do in a long time, but the final step to make a jam up rabbit dog is you've taught him how to trail a rabbit, you've taught him what he's supposed to do as a beagle running with other beagles. Once he learns that, then it's time to single him out. If you've got him running by six or eight months old, after that, if you can, if you can pick out a 30-day section to just turn him loose at night and just let him run all night. Turn him loose, let him run, and single him out because when he's running with other dogs, he just kind of knows how to help along. He don't know what it takes to fully run that rabbit, a wild rabbit, by himself. If you could, for thir once he runs with the dogs, knows what he's doing, if you could turn him loose for 30 nights in a row, which is hard to do, but if you could turn him loose for 30 nights in a row, put him up in the daytime, and just let him get out there and learn at his own pace. Now that he knows what to do, now that he's got his endurance built up, let him get out there and see what it fully takes to run a wild rabbit. If you can do that for 30 days in a row, no later than a year, you will have a super jam-up rabbit dog. Or at least you'll have the maximum that dog could give you. Uh, now, once again, every dog's gonna be different. Some dogs ain't gonna make the cut. Some are gonna fail at this. But if you got one that's got potential and you put him through all these steps, it ain't easy. But if it was easy, everybody'd have jam up rabbit dogs. You've got to put the time into them. You've got to put the miles on them, and don't quit. And um, I guess I'm gonna end this video with one very crucial piece of advice. Now, <clears throat> most people. Matter of fact, I'll just ask y'all right quick, and I want y'all to answer in the comments before I give my answer. Just tell me what you think. And uh, pause the video if you have to. Give your give your answer to this question, and then I'm going to give you the, my answer to it. The question being, what do you need? What's the number one thing you need to rabbit hunt? Now, most people's going to tell you you need land, or you need dogs, or you need a gun, or some people even go. Even a better result, they're going to need rabbits. Well, I'm telling you right now, all those answers are wrong. Um, the number one thing, this might blow your mind, the number one thing you need to rabbit hunt with is a rabbit hunter. You know, hunting don't mean killing. You, you're not going to kill a rabbit if there's no rabbits there, but it don't mean you can't hunt them. You know, and you ain't necessarily got to have a gun. You can have a bow, you can use a stick, you can use whatever you want to. You might not be successful, but you can still try to hunt them. You ain't necessarily got to have dogs. You can stomp drawers and stuff and try to get them. You know, you sling shots, whatever you get. I mean, all this is optional. I mean, all that's optional. The number one thing you need is a rabbit hunter. You got to make it up in your mind, if you're going to be a rabbit hunter, to just say, hey, that's what I am. That's what I'm going to be, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that. If you're not a rabbit hunter, it's not going to work. So, it's not easy. You feed dogs all year long. You got to train them. You know, it ain't like a deer rifle. You know, you buy it one time and you buy shells every once in a while. It, it ain't like that. They're going to get old. They're going to die. Your pack is constantly going to change. Your, your, the, your pack functionality is constantly going to change. You've got to get more dogs, whether you raise them, buy them, whatever. It's, it's a never-ending thing. So, <clears throat> like I said, that, just, uh, 
and building pans and all this other stuff. It can get a little hectic, but you know, if you get good at it, you can sell pups and kind of counterbalance that. But like I said, it's a full-time job in a sense. And if you're gonna be good at it, make up your mind that you're a rabbit hunter first and don't slack on it don't half half butt it i mean get on it get it done stay on them dogs be kind and loving to them you know you can't you can't force them to hunt you all you can do is guide them that's all you can do but guide them the best you know how to do and even me giving you all this advice or giving y'all some of this advice if y'all end up rabbit hunting y'all are still gonna end up doing something different for me everybody's got their own different level of tolerances but anyhow i I think this video is like 20 something minutes long now, so hopefully that helps some of y'all out. Um, good luck on your rabbit hunt.